If you really want to be a great leader and are humble enough to want to know and learn more, you are at the right place. This is an attempt to summarize rather simplified 10 most important leadership articles or lessons from the Harvard Business Review. I shall also be adding my two cents. This will not give you ready-made answers but some points that would push you to introspect and get better at achieving your leadership goals. Remember, when I say leader, it doesn't necessarily mean having a formal leadership position. Whether you are a student, a homemaker, an entrepreneur or a CEO, you can always lead others into achieving great things in life. And great things are not always about power or money. You know that, don't you? So let's begin with the 10 most important lessons that are basically based on articles with the same titles. What makes a leader? Did you know that most effective leaders, no matter what their level of IQ or technical skills, have a high degree of emotional intelligence? A person can be highly trained or have exceptional analytical skills and an endless supply of awesome ideas. Nothing will matter if he does not have the following traits or skills. These are self-awareness, which is knowing one's weaknesses, strengths and values. Self-regulation, being able to control disruptive or negative behaviors. Motivation, being achievement oriented and most importantly, empathy. But finally, social skills. You might be knowing people who are naturally blessed with these skills, but nearly all of us can develop and strengthen our abilities through practice. So in order to be an effective leader, one must show basic qualities, kindness, mutual respect and sensitivity. Believe me, it will go a long way towards being remembered as a great leader. Can you look inside yourself and see what you need to work on and how will you do it? You can also ask your team or the people you want to influence, but be prepared to handle some criticism too. It's all for a good cause after all. What makes an effective executive? We tend to always be attracted to people who are charismatic and have great personalities. Yet we also know of some simple, modest, straightforward people who we always look up to. So don't worry if you don't think that you have the right personality. A leader can be both easygoing and controlling or generous to thrifty. Yet they remain effective as they all follow the following eight practices. Asking what needs to be done. Asking what is right for the organization. Developing action plans. Taking responsibility for decisions. Taking responsibility for communicating. Focusing on opportunities rather than problems. Running productive meetings. And finally, pushing the idea of we, not I. So basically it means a leader seeks knowledge and turns that knowledge into action plans and ensures there is company-wide compatibility. A leader wins trust by considering the organization needs before his own. Difficult to achieve, isn't it? What leaders really do? As mentioned earlier, charisma or having an exotic personality doesn't have anything to do with leadership, though it can help short term. Also, it isn't meant for the chosen few. Nor is leadership meant to replace or compete with management. If you asked me, there shouldn't even be a debate on it. Both are necessary and complementary. Okay, so what would you prefer? A strong leadership with a weak management or a weak leadership with a strong management? Both are equally bad, isn't it? The challenge lies in being able to achieve a balance between these two. Let's see how each system goes about its tasks. Planning and budgeting versus setting direction. Management thrives on predictability and order, while leadership is about creating and adapting to change and setting a direction for the organization. Leadership is not about generating detailed plans or budgets, but high-level visions and strategies. Organizing and staffing versus aligning people. Managers look for the right fit between people and jobs why leadership aligns those people with the vision and sails them through the alternative, inspirational future. In simple words, leadership is about being able to communicate its intent to the right people, to do the right things. Controlling versus motivating. 
managers are more concerned about the routine operational aspects of the job while leaders focus on touching people to the deepest level making them believe in the organization its values and giving their best again it's all about inspiring others so to answer what do leaders really do they align and motivate people to achieve a great future for the organization the work of leadership in this rapidly changing environment organizations need to face many challenges such as changes in societies markets technologies competitions etc leaders find it really tough to be able to mobilize people to do adaptive work so what is adaptive work this is something we need to do when our beliefs are challenged when the values that worked for us are no longer important when there is shift in the way things are seen leadership finds it tough because it's no longer about the behavior and thought patterns of the teams but their own self so what can be done getting on to the balcony try to get an objective high level perspective from the top and look for important patterns such as power struggles and resistance to change then go after them identifying your own adaptive style if you are in a leadership position do you understand yourself your teams and your customers can you identify the dysfunctional situations or conflicts can you face those and become stronger together manage distress go step by step and let people come out with their questions and doubts don't start too many initiatives at the same time make people comfortable but communicate your presence and authority in a gentle way maintain disciplined attention basically it means don't let people look out for scapegoats and be ready to take responsibility give work back to the employees make people independent and show them that you believe in them to provide solutions protect your own kind don't silence whistle blowers or people with different creative ideas encourage fresh thinking let people be fearless in being themselves can you do it ask yourself how fearless are you why should anyone be led by you imagine you are in a room full of executives and you want complete silence just ask them this question so why would anyone want to be led by you yes all you will hear is a stunned silence so why is that so actually the followers are already empowered with just too much of information and advice out there yes this youtube video included and apparently there have been thousands of book published already on leadership and management so if you are a leader what new can you really tell your followers actually inspirational leaders share some common qualities your job is to find out which one do you have maybe all maybe none but the idea is to learn and improve isn't it let's talk about them i mean the qualities leaders show their weaknesses but well selectively it's all right to show an amount of vulnerability and weakness remember no one knows everything even leaders and it doesn't really hurt to ask but also keep in mind do not overdo with the vulnerability bit at your workplace leaders rely heavily into intuition leaders are great at collecting and analyzing soft data that helps them to know how and when exactly to take action leaders manage employees with tough empathy so leaders really care passionate about the work people do but should they care about the people more think about it leaders know and promote their uniqueness so do you have what gives you an edge over others can you dare to be different crucibles of leadership according to research a reliable indicator of true leadership is how the leader deals with difficult and negative situations extraordinary leaders handle adversity to emerge stronger and better just like how a phoenix would rise from the ashes these ashes um sorry events are called crucibles they are like intense and often traumatic tests so what should be the approach rather the leadership skills needed to sail through being able to engage and motivate others to be a part of the problem and the solution a distinctive compelling voice that commands respect integrity and adaptive capacity which means 
being able to understand the context and weigh the options available. The Triumph of Humility and Fierce Resolve Generally, we assume that transforming companies from good to great require larger-than-life heroes, who are more like celebrities. But as we have learned in the previous lessons, there is also another class of leaders. The shy, unpretentious, even awkward types who hate attention but do unbelievably well in leading their people. Those are your level 5 leaders. On a personal level, they are modest yet have a fierce professional will. So let's learn about the four other levels. You can have a bit of all in you and usually depending on the times and situation, one level dominates. Sounds interesting, isn't it? The level 1 are highly capable individuals who have perfect skills, talents and behaviors. Level 2 contribute a great deal in group of team objectives. Level 3 are your competent managers who are good at organizing people and resources. Level 4 are those effective leaders who have a vigorous and a clear commitment to high level goals and objectives. And finally, level 5. Oh, that's already explained. The simple guys who you should not even think of taking on a ride. Can you think of a few? I get it. Maybe they aren't famous, but they are there nevertheless and do matter a lot. 7 Transformations of Leadership Developmental psychologists claim that leadership depends on something known as the action logic, which means how they understand the surroundings and react when their own safety and power is challenged. Now they may not call it by the term of action logic, but it is important to at least be able to make an effort to understand your own action logic. It is true for everyone, not just leaders. Without going into too much of detail, a leader should strive to advance into three stages from an expert to an achiever. Leaders should not be only relying on their technical skills but also dive into topics such as effective delegation and leading high-performing teams. So focus on delivering results, then perfecting your own knowledge from an achiever to an individualist. Leaders shouldn't just accept goals as a given but try to analyze and improve future goals. Leadership development programs should come in handy here. From an individualist to a strategist, leaders should develop their abilities to see the big picture and be able to prioritize what really is important. Do you know there are seven types of action logics including the above, such as opportunists, diplomats and alchemists? Guess which one is most common? Research says 38% of the sampled leaders are the expert types. But which type is the rarest? Alchemists meaning the leaders who create social and spiritual transformation just account for 1% of them. Sad, isn't it? Discovering your authentic leadership Since so many years, so many of scholars have tried to determine definitive styles, personality traits, skills, etc. of great leaders. But honestly, it's a good thing that no clear profile of a great leader has emerged. Think about it. You can learn from others, get inspired by those you follow, but who would you rather be? Yourself, isn't it? A good place to start on a journey of self-discovery for the sake of having your unique leadership style, just ask yourself these questions. Who and which childhood experience had the greatest impact on you? What are the moments when you can truly say, yes, this is me? Do you have deeply held values or have they changed over the years? What or who motivates you? Well, you can include yourself. Do you have a diverse team that can broaden your perspectives? Are you the same person with your family, friends and your colleagues? Have you ever compromised on your authenticity? And finally, can you list the steps you can take to develop an authentic leadership? So friends, authentic leadership means being true to the person you are and working on developing your character and not just skills and talents. And this brings us to the last leadership lessons from the Harvard Business Review. In praise of the incomplete leader. Finally friends, it's time to break the myth of the complete leader. The handsome guy in a suit who is all perfect and has everything figured out. The one who is great at troubleshooting and inspires everyone to march in pure harmony to revolutionary business goals. Nah, 
In today's world, full of complex problems and changing dynamics, leaders who aim for perfection can only burn out. They would endanger themselves and the lives of their organizations. Maybe there is a better way. Why not accept that you are human with your own peculiarities? Still, develop these four capabilities, which are sense making, being able to make sense of the environment, relating, build relationships, trust and commitment, visioning, find ways to develop and communicate a great vision, inventing, look for new innovative ways of doing things. Not everyone will be equally good in the four capabilities. Recognize the areas you need to work on, but don't overdo anything. Passion is great, but before being a great leader, ask yourself, are you a good human first? And that, my friends, is the crux of everything we have learned so far. Being true to yourself and developing the old-fashioned values of honesty and integrity and being really committed in the welfare of your people. What if you fail? At least you did the right thing. Thank you so much for watching.